last week. If you thought Alabama meth gators were bad, just wait until you hear about Florida nuke crocs. In a surprise to nobody, perverts continue to ruin things for naked people, and it turns out Mother Nature is getting her revenge by taking in our trains. And the Lord said unto him, Give me your tricycle. Robot lady, sound the alarm! Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Don't waste my motherfucking time! This week is going to be fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you right now, I don't think we've accomplished this. We've been on the air now for uh, two and a half years, three years, something like that, right? Just shy of three. Yeah, just shy of three years. Uh, I don't know that we've had another Christian rock artist on our show. So this what do you is, mean another? This is a first for us, <laughs> and we're very excited about it. This might also be the last show that we're allowed to broadcast because <laughs> there's about an 80% chance we get hit by lightning tonight. So... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, why else do you think we record this in a basement? Yeah, exactly. Just to be <laughs> safe. So, uh, uh, if we are hit by lightning, I assume that, uh, we who usually replace your hour will then be replaced by two other ignorant, uninformed, ill-advised, self-deprecating morons ranting about opinions that they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. Our goal here at Another Wasted Hour is to convince you that where we hail from just outside Washington, D.C. is not just a city of politics and scandals, but one brimming with art, music, and culture and lightning bolts. As impossible as that may seem. So listeners, now that you know why you're here in studio, we have the one, the only, the chosen one. <laughs> Ethan Andrew. Hello, everyone. Now I'm this, already very nervous. <laughs> this is the best part because you have basically spent the entire pre-roll. So uh, for those people who don't know, our artists uh, show up a little early and we kind of talk with them, get to know them a little and ask questions so that we don't just go into the show completely blind. And you have done everything in your power to be like, no, no, no. I'm just like a normal guy that just does music. And so I had to intro the well. show as <laughs> worse as possible. Yeah. Um, we've spent like a half hour talking about how like there's good Christian music out there that isn't just all like heavy handed. And it just, Christian people making music rather than like gospel, right? Like where it's just praising. Panderous is yeah. always the word that I yeah go and for. So um <laughs> so I apologize, but I had to. At that point, we had we had discussed it so thoroughly. So uh I and <laughs> that's I that's Keith disappointing expectations for that, going on three years now. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> My entire job is just to poke at the thing that hurts the most. Um, uh, so you are singer songwriter in the DC area. That's right. Uh, you've got some new songs coming out. Yeah, I have uh, three songs coming out on a single in uh, the first week of August. So Monday, August 5th, we're talking about mm -hmm. three songs coming out. Uh, Hidden Hand. You have a cover by the Fire Theft uh, called Heaven. That's right. And you have the single that we have here today called I Am. Mm -hmm. And if people are interested, you get a sneak peek. It is If this is coming out before the 5th, which it should, you can fast forward to the one hour mark of this show and you'll be the no only people. No pressure on me or anything. What's that? So no pressure on me or anything yeah. to get it out before the 5th. Exactly. <laughs> fast forward to the one hour mark of the show and you'll be the only people on earth that have gotten a chance to listen to I Am by Ethan Andrew. This is exciting. We did do a world premiere. It's not even a world premiere where like we're the only podcast that's done it and it's on the internet right now doing things. We actually get to be the people who launch it in a way. You're right? welcome. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> I almost think we should have like a sound effect or something for that. Pew, 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 pew. I'm going to make one and it's going to be terrible. Insert later. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if people want to get hold of the uh, the other two singles or they would like to buy this single from you, which we would encourage you to support the artists um, anywhere. The digital music is available, right? Spotify, Bandcamp, iTunes, all the above. OK, yeah. all of those. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also go to Facebook.com slash Ethan Andrew Music. Mm -hmm. I assume there'll be music up there. And also, if you have shows coming up, uh, you'll be promoting them there as well. That's right. nothing on the docket right now, though, right? Yeah. Uh... Maybe like an open mic. There's time. There's time. Like I, if I don't know about it, yeah. that means like 
you, you know what, Ethan? I don't know if you want to, but I've heard if you go up to Ethan Andrew Music on Facebook, you can find it's out. It's there. Yeah, if you have any shows. I'll find out about it, too. <laughs> if people could go up right now to Facebook.com slash Ethan Andrew Music and post shows for him <laughs> to let him know where he should play. Actually, that uh, would be amazing. That would be like the greatest way. Um <laughs> Like contacting venues is hard. So if you have shows, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll or play maybe a song, a two. Yeah. It's okay. See, there you go. So if anyone needs uh Ethan to open for them for just acoustic, a couple of songs, he's in. Just set up a, a mic and a, a DI and you're good, right? It's a different kind of panderous Christian rock at this point. Right. <laughs> Please listen. <laughs> That's anything that you could do to make this happen. Um, yeah, so we were talking a, a little bit about, uh, Christian music, uh, and I was saying that like growing up, there was, uh, there was a few bands that I really dug. Um, uh, Jars of Clay was one of them that you hadn't heard of before, yeah. which I, I always really uh, thought was fantastic. Um, and then I, I told you a little bit, usually we, at the end of the show, do a couple of stories from the artist. Um, sometimes those are stories about touring or shows or things that have happened and you've got a couple um, I wanted to share one of mine. So I used to be in a band called the Dreamscapes Project, and we toured around sometimes, which, as we all know, if you actually have ever toured, it's basically like a really cool concert in another city where you're like, this is neat. I'm in a new place. I've never been before. Sandwiched by two incredibly boring drives to said city. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And so we invented all kinds of different games. Um, at one point, uh, we uh, I was a football fan and, and mm -hmm. I'm a football fan. And some of my uh, co-bandmates were football fans. We were in, I think, Connecticut at the time going up to Boston and uh, the Skins were playing. <sighs> Obviously, that wasn't going to be on the radio anywhere near Connecticut. No. But one of my bandmates had an app on his phone where it didn't show the game, but it told him each play of the game. Right. Play by play. So it was like started like first and 10 at the 20. And then there was like a run for five yards. And now it was second and five. Right. And mm -hmm. that's like all it told him. It's just like a gridiron, you know, and the ball would move. Mm -hmm. And we we made him announce the, sh the game for us. So he had to add all the details. <laughs> anytime there was anytime there was a play, so it was like which direction was it run? Was anyone hurt? Like any of those types of things. And man, we cracked up the entire time. But one of our favorite games was something we called Yay Jesus. Yeah. Which was interesting for a band that uh that was primarily made up of secular human beings. We really dug Christian rock stations. And it wasn't necessarily because we were a huge fan of the music. It was because we felt that if we scanned through every station on the dial, we felt very sure that we could stop within like 10 seconds of listening on the Christian rock station in that area without knowing what the number was. Mm -hmm. And we were really good at it. And it made <laughs> us so happy. It's definitely safe, you know, being in the United States, being like yeah. a... Like a you can't see me air quoting, but like not Christian nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah, completely secular nation. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> but it was so great. And it would be before like any lyrics hinted it off. Because uh, as we were talking about earlier, there are a lot of lyrics in Christian rock that are just very blunt, right? Like just, and that's how we would know. That's how we would confirm it. But it was usually before that. You can tell like it's something about the recording quality versus the like fact that you recognize it or not and like the something about the style of it and the chord structure there was something about it that within about 10 seconds we could all go yeah yeah i know this is probably it and then we would wait <laughs> for like 30 or 40 seconds until they said like jesus and then we would go yeah <laughs> Woo! nailed it <laughs> and, and then usually move on to another radio station but it made us so happy. It brought us such joy, mm -hmm. um, which I think the artists who were making the music, although they didn't intend it to cause joy in the way it did, I think would be happy with the result. I feel like that. Do you? What do you think? Um. Well, I can say from being in a band and being on tour, um, like, okay, 
so we the longest drive we did was Pittsburgh to Akron, and mm-hmm. it's just a lot of corn. Just a, <laughs> just a lot of corn. Um, All in rows. Yeah, and none so, of that free range. Right. <laughs> so when we got to Akron, um, we were talking to. Um, some of the guys there and they're like, oh, so like, what do you do on the, yeah, um, to stay entertained? And we kind of like all looked at each other and we we're like, we, we talk. And they were yeah. like, ew, you guys are friends. That's terrible. No, you guys we... actually talk. That's like, uh, I don't know. That's like masturbating to a picture of your girlfriend. That's <laughs> awful. <laughs> no, um, we talked all the time, <laughs> but we'd come up with weird games during it. Right. It would be like, yeah. Another game we had was what movie can you name that without changing the title could also be a porn? <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly challenging and gets really dirty really quickly. Um, so if you're listening to the show, feel free to email us at contact Jaws. at what's that? Jaws. Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> feel free to email us at, at contact at another way I would say like all James Bond movies. Yeah. Golden Eye. <laughs> no, it, it quickly deteriorated from like that to like three men and a baby. So oh, it was, <laughs> it got really bad really quickly. And then Four we were weddings like, and a funeral. We cannot hang out with each other anymore. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> And then we're like, we're going to find the Christian rock station. This is, we need some Jesus in our lives. This is terrible. <laughs> we, so, uh, but email, email us at contact at another way, Sarah.com with any movies you think that uh, without changing the name would make a good porn. And maybe we'll talk about that next week. Um, once again, Ethan Andrew on the show, uh, Monday, August 5th. He's got three songs coming out, Hidden Hand, uh, the cover of Heaven. And I am, which we have at the end of our show. You can fast forward to the one hour mark and take a listen, skip all the the rigmarole. But we would like if you came back because I think we've got some really entertaining things coming up. And then again, don't forget to follow him at uh, Facebook.com slash Ethan Andrew Music. So speaking of rigmarole, uh, we're going to kind of uh, play a game. Maybe this would be a good touring game. Okay. Kind of a, a game here in the studio. We're going to make you the editor-in-chief of your very own publication. Okay. Okay? It's a new publication. You get to launch it from the ground up. We, as your faithful reporters, mm. uh, we have gone and scoured the internet and found actual news items that we're going to pitch to you to try and get in to the publication. You're going to let us know whether or not uh, it is uh, it is news. Okay. This is what we call the weather report. So are you ready? Yes. Excellent. Adam, get us started off. Well, last week you brought me meth gators, Keith. So this year I bring on this week, I bring you American crocodiles thriving outside nuclear power plant. Oh, how big are they? <laughs> I feel like they should be huge. So, is this like, a, yeah, is this the lead up to Godzilla um, to first King the- Kong? So the actual article is all about, you know, it's this group that's trying to... I didn't know crocodile, crocodiles at least used to be endangered. <laughs> crocodiles. And it's all about this group that's taken them from endangered to threatened, which is like a pretty noteworthy achievement, I feel like. Definitely. <laughs> sure. But how they've done this by creating this crocodile habitat outside of a nuclear power plant down in Florida. Oh, okay. Do they... Has no one's seen a movie. Yeah, yeah. no one is at all... <laughs> Are they also training them in the martial arts? <laughs> I think that that's... These are questions that need to be answered, Adam. Uh, it just remind me, I can't remember where it was, but my dad used to fish near a power plant, and he always said there was the cold water side and the warm water side. Oh, yeah. And he, he, and my, he and my godfather would always fish at the cold water side and the guys would always and other fishermen would come up and be like oh you gotta you gotta go 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 over to the warm water side the fish there are huge and my dad be like yeah and i'm sure they glow in the dark and got three eyes too yeah they're, right. they're pre-cooked uh, <laughs> uh so all right that's awesome so so this is just a movie waiting to happen no, if asylum has not already made this film it's in production no yes. absolutely this is basically a nightmare it's already better than king of monsters i'll tell you that it's, be- it's better I didn't than get to King see of that. Monsters. King of Monsters was pretty bad. I love Godzilla, but that movie was bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so don't see King of Monsters. So we'll start the article with, P.S., don't <laughs> see... <laughs> but is it news? Yeah, definitely, definitely news. If not, uh, like, something, just like an excerpt of, like, keep your eye out for... <laughs> glowing crocodiles glowing crocodiles in florida it's it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be like the next one of those memes that's like florida man does yeah 
<laughs> well, last week we had overly aggressive meth crocodiles. So really what we're mm-hmm. doing is just t- tempting fate at yeah. this point. <laughs> was that also in Florida, by the way? No, that was uh, Tennessee joking about Alabama. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not not a joke. It's just it's funny because it's true. Um, <laughs> all right. So so in that made it in. Definitely. in. Excellent. Keith, I thought of another one. Hunt for Red October. <laughs> <laughs> the Horse Whisperer. Okay, so... <laughs> um, straight from my file, I have... Um, I, I'm just... I'm going to go straight at this one because I don't know how, how else to, like, to really pitch it. Okay. A cooler filled with male genitalia found in raid of Phoenix Body Donation Company. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that's you definitely don't want to mix that up when you're going camping, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, did you yeah. bring beer? Yeah, I think. <laughs> How much more do you got? Like, what other details are there? Uh, say, what the hell is a body donation center? Well, you know, like so you can like donate your organs to other people. Yeah, but this isn't uh-huh. like the fire station. Like, no one expects like the baby to just be <laughs> dropped out at front. Like, full male genitalia. Yeah. Like, what do you do with that? So is it found? A is few it on things. ice at least? So it was a it was a biological resource center specializing in accepting the bodies of people after they've died in exchange for off- offering their families free pick up the bodies plus the cremated remains of the bodies as part of the company that the part uh, that the company did not sell. So essentially, like if um, a medical school needs cadavers, they can sell them cadavers mm-hmm. um, for science types of things, um, any of those pieces. But they. When they got raided, they found out that maybe they weren't doing all of the things they were supposed to do. The paperwork. Hmm. But the paperwork also, I mean, (laughs) I feel like if you have an entire cooler full of dongs like that, (laughs) what you're doing is you're not ethically selling parts of a body and cremating the rest. You are setting up to prank someone. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Like, okay. Or providing the molds for the for those gummy dick companies. Right. You're like Stevenson. Come here. Come here. <laughs> okay. So don't tell anyone else. But for the past nine months, I've been taking every wiener off of everybody <laughs> and putting them in this cooler. And I'm gonna put it in Johansson's back seat on a hot day. <laughs> I know the first question I want to ask is why, but I think the actual question I would ask is how. How? <laughs> i don't know what you're asking how about like everything one is, like how did you get it one off? answer is how just did you, knife like not get caught <laughs> how did how did you get the box uh, i'm assuming that it didn't how are get, you disposing of the bodies afterward <laughs> i'm assuming that they didn't get caught well so they were legally allowed to get the bodies mm-hmm. i'm assuming they didn't get That's caught right. because the it's management just center. didn't seem to care which is why they got raided mm. there was also apparently a head sewn on to a mismatched bo- uh, body which okay. also sounds like a screaming a serial prank. killer yeah <laughs> right <laughs> keith i have to question your ideas of what a prank yeah. is <laughs> you won't next weekend <laughs> um, yeah there was a bucket of limbs and a cooler filled with penises um i just i feel bad for the fbi agents Right. That raided the place and we're like, oh, Jesus Christ. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. What That's could... not how that went. That's like, hey, Jim, <laughs> come <laughs> here. You're not going to believe You're this. You're not going to like, or he just like texts it a picture to his buddy back at the prank sink. And the guy's like, oh, oh <laughs> yeah. man. <laughs> what? It, what? You, you think that they were like going around and, and like doing their raid and everything. And then they like a couple of them came across this cooler and they just looked at it. <laughs> They looked at each other and they were like, hey, Smith, come here. <laughs> and they're like, they just all like, gather around. They're like, hey, someone go grab the new guy real yeah. quick. <laughs> I got no, pu- put it, put it right back where it was. Put the lid back on. Yeah. Make it look like yeah. it, and just tell him that like, <laughs> like, hey, I need you to open that container. <laughs> right. No, just leave the lid loose. Like, so when you pour cheese on pizza, it all comes out. <laughs> And be oh. like, uh, carry this one uh, out to the truck. And you're like, oh, God. oh uh. God, they're all over me. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, God, that was good. Oh, we're going to tell everyone about this one back at the precinct. I just imagine them all huddled around it being like, you open it. <laughs> I will I will give you $5 to open that. You know what? I will bet you $5 it's full of eyes. <laughs> like, no, all right, I'm on. I uh, $5... 
on uh, just toenail clippings, you know, and like, and they're just going around. And then the guy was like, dicks, it's definitely dicks. And they open, and they're like, oh, how did you know it was dicks? All right, everybody give him the money. Damn. Um, so is uh, it news? I'm going to say no, but I want, I want you to know that it's, it's a, it's like a good no. It's a good it's no. It's a good no, because I, I, I feel just that uh, on the emo times, yeah. We're like very serious. Um <laughs> so I I'd be afraid that people would consider it like an onion article. Yeah. They would think that it's fake. What if we dress all the dicks in cloaks? Um and give them eyeliner. Would that would that I, be I think more at that emo? point it's still Have it, you confused emo and goths <laughs> again? Uh, there is no difference. Yeah. Well uh, <laughs> Come at me, emo goth people! <laughs> I know some good vampire emos. If you're like, <laughs> going to, if you're going to piss people off, I feel like emo and goth are the way to go, because there's no way they've eaten enough to be able to fight you. Mm. They are frail. <laughs> They're they have no vitamin D. Like you, you just need to like lock your doors at night. Yeah, um, exactly. Come at come at me in the middle of the day. They won't. <laughs> the bones are brittle because of the lack of of sunlight. Yeah, no, I I think I could take them. Um. So not news, you're going to say, because because Sorry. of the theme you're going with. Just because we're right. serious at the emo times. That's, of course. Why wouldn't you be? It's a very serious matter. Mm -hmm. All right, Adam. Perverts in bushes are ruining nude zone in Paris Park, say naturists. If what? this gets in, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was me being goth. Just Yeah. Just, uh, Oh, that one's dark. tough. Um, so I, I, I will say I picked this one because it's the the title pretty much explains everything you really need to know about this. Yeah, right. Paris has these parks in the middle of the city where you can just go and be au natural. Yes, and of course there are desperate people just ruining it for everybody. But what I love was just yet another example of this when I opened it up is the. The mayor saying after I heard these complaints, I spoke to a male friend who goes to this naturist area every single day. He told me he'd never seen any sort of activity or activities that didn't correspond to the idea of naturism. He did admit that it might be different for women. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nobody's looking at me. Also, who's this friend? <laughs> right. <laughs> I haven't seen anything. I'm here's the thing I'm wondering. Like, so are you not allowed in the park if you're not nude? Is that the problem? Like, I like haven't these perverts heard of sunglasses? I feel like Trench you coats. Just, Trench coats is a thing. Yeah, you just walk through the park, being like, "All right, yeah, yeah, look at that." It's not even that. I think it's just so much like when you're in the park, you're just supposed to be just minding your own business. Just happen to be nude. Oh, gotcha. And then you. there's and then there's people like in the bushes doing you know creepy stuff that <laughs> are making lewd remarks and basically you know being rude and uh, what's I don't know what the words I'm looking for are like basically just incredibly unpleasant to everyone who's just there to feel the sunshine on their skin. Right, like ruining the whole you know, nice judgeless freedom that comes with I'm like laughing as I'm saying it. Cause I I don't know. It's really I, it's hard just, to keep a straight face while talking about I've this. I've never article. yeah, I've never been to a nude beach or um actually there is a nudist colony. Um there's a church in Annapolis. Oh yeah. Um that I have frequented and you do drive by a nudist colony is a very large fence. Um, oh, that makes sense. And not yeah. chain link, like full boarded. <laughs> so you can't see anything. Um, I feel like I want to go to this park and just go up to a nudist and be like, do you have a lighter? And just see if they go for it. Mm. <laughs> like if they're like, do oh, they yeah, reach for their pocket? No, I don't. No, I oh, am that's naked funny. right now. I don't have a lighter. So yeah, yeah. only to be horrified when one of them does produce one. <laughs> right. You can keep that lighter. I do not want it. <laughs> Hmm. This cigarette tastes terrible. Um, so I think I'm also uh like stuck in it. It's like a no, but it's like a good no. Um You know how you know you're old? This is how I know I'm an old person. Hmm. Like naked people who aren't trying to be sexy, not sexy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like if just naked people walk down the street, I'm not like, oh yeah, naked people. <laughs> I'm like, this is awkward. I sh I should leave. <laughs> like when I was young, like when you're yeah. when you're like 14, you're like, are those boobs that are a quarter of a mile away? Let me figure out how I can get closer. Right. In any way. 
is that is that a nipple that has been scrambled by cable television? I will stare <laughs> at it. Anything you could possibly do, you were like, I just if I just get a glimpse, my life would be so much better. And now we're old and we're like the internet. Do there have to be so many naked people here because it's really distracting from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so it's a good no again. Cause, cause, you want to live? Yeah, man. I feel like I feel weird, like that. I have to explain every no, like, <laughs> which seems exactly like something would happen at the emo times. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Um, Look, I don't want to upset you. I, I don't. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm not really trying sorry. to. Like, um, yeah, so it's a no because I just don't think the readers, uh, like, they would feel oddly called out by it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Unless these are a, a parks at night, and then maybe. They would join in, right? But there's no way there's. I don't want to alienate my readers, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, <laughs> on to the next one. As a joke, in 2014, two guys sold a bag of fresh Alberta air on eBay for 165 dollars. They are now selling 300 thousand dollars worth of canned fresh air a year. 100% yes. All things Jeez. climate change is super emo. Yeah. This is fascinating. <laughs> yes. So the air comes in two varieties, uh, uh, Banff and Lake Louise. <laughs> okay. Which is two areas in Alberta. Yeah. And uh, the bottle of air, which comes with a little mask, is enough uh, for approximately 161 second breaths. And it sells for $32 on the company's online store. They actually expect, so they're not right now in stores in India and China, which... Uh, are arguably two of the more uh, the, the necessary markets, right? The two of the more po <laughs> uh, like polluted, air mm -hmm. polluted countries. They feel like once they get into there, due to the population and to environmental issues, they are going to have a multi million dollar um, mm -hmm. revenue stream every year. Uh, this is fascinating. That yeah, I mean, uh, emos also uh, can I can personally confirm love yeah. spaceballs uh, right. the movie so <laughs> yeah um Perrier. yes like i said anything um anything climate change is super emo and also space balls references how funny is it that like these things that were just ridiculous like you know 30 40 years ago are now like nope that's a thing that we're doing we're just doing that <laughs> yeah and that's wasn't it the okay. simpsons that said trump was going to be president yeah right like, and we're all kind of like oh ah, that's funny oh no it's it's a thing Woof. we're doing it now so all right so that one's in yes excellent 100%. we're tied up all right we're moving on to our lightning round Woo! Lightning. we're just going to throw some headlines at you if you have questions we'll try to answer but we did not do as nearly as much reading on these as okay. the others. We, we didn't even read the first ones, we'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Dying birds fell from the sky, quote, screaming and bleeding from their eyes in horrific incident in Australia. Absolutely. Yes. I believe that this is actually in the Bible, right? Isn't this? <laughs> I feel like this is something that we're supposed to be paying attention to. Isn't this in Euripides or something? Or what? what's a Bible thing? Name a Bible thing. Uh... <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what you're trying to go with here. Like just, yeah, you just, just put me on the spot. I feel really. I'm just showing up on the fact that you're like these. I'm pretty yeah, sure it's yeah, not a Bible thing. No, I think right that like it's like verse ten, like uh, line seventeen of Beowulf or whatever. Whatever the whatever's <laughs> in the Bible. The Bible, like that's um, a book in the Bible, right? It's one of those. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> can confirm. Euripides. <laughs> Yeah. Is a thing. No, that's <laughs> it's towards the end, right? It's in the back. I didn't get to it, right? Because it's right. it's a long book and it's a little dry. <laughs> but it's um but in the cartoon version, all right, yes. I think in the end there's like, aren't there birds screaming and bleeding out of their eyes? Or is that it's not exactly like first uh firstborn or locusts, but it's on par. Yeah, I feel like it's on par. There could have been just a, a misinterpretation of the Hebrew enough to be like they were like, Oh, it's a plague of frogs, and really it said was mm -hmm. birds falling out of the sky screaming and bleeding out of their eyes. I did say to you when we started this <laughs> that I, just because I'm a Christian rocker does yeah. not mean I'm a good Christian. If it makes uh, you feel any better, <laughs> I just made Beowulf part of the Bible, so I feel like we're on par. I was going to let you run with it. <laughs> <laughs> he um, has the Holy Spirit in him. He's changing yeah. it. <laughs> no, but yeah, there's a part in the Bible where like everyone dies. Uh, Hamlet, I think, is the part 
Isn't that what Ed's at the one? He's got the Holy Spirit in him. Yeah. Um, I'm not even going to bother trying to correct you. Just just go where you're going. All right. That one's in. Uh, aggressive seagulls are swarming the beach, and it's your fault. Oof, no. Too aggressive. No, it's your fault. No. Oh. Like Ethan. it says Ethan Andrew right there. No, it says it's your fault. <laughs> That's the headline. Yeah. It's your fault. I'm sorry. I assume it's, they meant Ethan it's, it's It's a tad aggressive. <laughs> right. <laughs> How? I'm concerned about these singles if they cause seagulls to attack people. Yeah. I hope that they are better recorded. I mean, the one we have sounds pretty good, so I assume it's one of the other ones that's causing the violence. It could be like one of those uh, like low hums that no one can hear mm. um, that's you know, preaching some Satanism right underneath the track. I assume heaven is the one that makes them attack. And then when you play hidden hand, they all scream and bleed from their eyes and fall out of the <laughs> no, sky. I think heaven like gives you the false sense of security. Oh, okay. And then hidden <laughs> hand is the, um, is the like, Ooh, maybe I got your attention now. Let's change the context. <laughs> right. There's no way seagulls are going to steal these fries from me on the board. Oh God. Yeah. I am. is definitely the attack song, <laughs> which now makes me think that I really need to reorganize these songs. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause right. Right now it's hidden hand i am um heaven and yeah let's no yeah. let's lead with the cover now we, <laughs> see look at this this is good we, we're doing strategy now that's important um Strategic by the way marketing if yeah. you want to hear the song that is the attack song fast forward to the one hour mark of this show <laughs> and then you can come back and attack us um so is it is it news uh no too aggressive what too they've aggressive. said is that decades of feeding french fries and other snacks to seagulls on the boardwalk have emboldened them to become more aggressive so now they are attacking people and they're like give me your food oh man i think if you reframe it to um to be less aggressive and right. it, and it'd be like here's another reason not to go outside or to beaches with lots of sun if we just that, go, that could be like emo times what if we say yeah alfred hitchcock was right yeah yeah I'll nailed it yeah you got it all right yeah i'm in <laughs> birds <laughs> yeah that was totally that was totally a lightning round murderer released after being deemed too old to kill again kills again <laughs> how old is too old 77 that's not too old you are correct it would seem <laughs> yes. yeah no yeah <laughs> fact um, <laughs> you are nothing gets past you, does it? I guess not. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that that seems fun. Yeah, that seems fun for the emo times. Do you think that this has happened before? Like they started at like thirty, and then they were like, "Well, no, he could do it again." And then they were like, uh, "Try thirty-two," and then they <laughs> they're just inching along. And they're trying worst to get case three study strikes. ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like, I mean, we don't know for sure until it happens. So, yeah, uh, next one's going to be 78. <laughs> no, I find that those things are usually like a, a population issue, but they blame it on something else. Does that judge get fired at that point? Because we pay him to be good aren't, at judging things. Uh, so aren't judges <laughs> elected? I I don't know. I think some are appointed, right? Because yeah. the president can appoint a bunch of like. Well, that's like the highest high. Yeah. Right. But I think some states. Because uh, I feel like. Yeah. Well, that's true. I think so, it depends. Maybe. I don't think you fire them. Yeah. Hopefully people are paying attention, which they're not. No, um, no, they're absolutely not. Specifically in state elections. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Does, is that what that looks like? If you were to like get a pamphlet about a judge running for judgeship, they'd be like, let me show you. How judgmental I am. Those <laughs> pants look terrible on you. I like what you did there. Judge, right. judgmental. Yeah, that works. <laughs> that works. Should you really be going out looking like that? Keith, what are you doing with your life, man? Right. I, I, I see a, a career in, in yeah. judge politics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you probably don't need a third cookie. I'm just saying. Oh, right. I would pay to sit in any courtroom that you ran, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> just because all the things I hand down would be ridiculous. You! have been sentenced to three years of learning how to juggle. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Right, see? Oh, my God. <laughs> I would I would clean up this city. I nope. was going to say, like, uh, <laughs> you're only allowed to eat grape Skittles um, for every meal for a year. You have to live with the nuclear alligators. 
<laughs> he comes back like uh, in a an, fully tamed alligator. <laughs> in a nudist park in Paris. Like, you thought I was too old for these alligators. Yeah, right. And I was I was born with these alligators. All right. So it, is it news? Did you say? Um, yeah, definitely news. Do you remember what it was or did you just get distracted by alligators? No, 77. <laughs> not, not too old to murder. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's the new headline. 77, <laughs> comma, not too old to murder. <laughs> See, that should be, they should send that out with the AARP pamphlets. Like, yes. Are you feeling old? No, no, no. 77 is not too old to murder. <laughs> uh, more than 12,000 people's journeys were affected when nearly 30 trains in Japan shuttered to a halt because of a rogue slug. Mm. One rogue slug. How big is this slug? It was just slug size. It was not a particularly fantastically sized slug, but it got into the electrical grid system and shorted everything out. Oh, in related news, that the slug, slug is, is dead. dead. Yeah, that slug is dead. <laughs> yeah. It is too old to kill. Oh. Mm. <laughs> um, I don't know, international things are kind of tough because it's... Uh... Yeah, but emo people f- love Japan. Do they? Yeah. No, emo's big in Japan. I think you're confusing emos with wees, with uh, weeaboos. Shut up. <laughs> so we got like emo goths. I yeah. guess like the emo times is probably uh, transcendent. Like, you know, There's we got whole... some goths, we got some yeah. weebos. Um, You've got that whole okay. like that emo group. Uh, what is it? The triads? They yeah. love they love it. <laughs> They're very emotional. I feel like this is the, now the second or third headline that I've said no to, but you've changed my mind. <laughs> that, that's my gift. All right. Sure. Sure, Keith. <laughs> all right. That's it. That's all of them. So uh, we've gotten a, a good smattering of you had international stuff already because you had Paris. Right. So. You didn't want to be racist. Which one was the Paris one? Then, oh, that was the perverts. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. But that was a no, wasn't it? Maybe. Let's not go yes back and talk one. about it now. No, that, that, that was the good no. That was the good no. Yeah, you did have. Yeah. You had like only like one bad no and a couple of good no's. <laughs> and then you had two no's that became yeses. And like, uh, yeah, yes. I was going to say, I think only the good nose stayed nose. <laughs> um, the bad nose, but you were like, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, now we need to find out what is uh, what is the name of this new publication that you've created. Were we calling it the Emo Times? I, I think so. Yes, yeah, I didn't Emo know if that Times. was a working title or if that was what was going out to the presses. Uh, I no, that's the publication. I don't know I if think. you want the Emo Gazette or something or hmm. <laughs> Gazette. <laughs> uh all right emo time so go uh check out your local uh newsstand if those still exist and look up the emo times uh for all of this fantastic news and more but in a very very tight scope and or the aarp right um, special on <laughs> you can kill two. 77 yeah um <laughs> awesome so how do you feel you did you that was fine you might have a future in this uh lightning round like I'm <laughs> not very good at that. I, I, I'm very full of questions. We're not good at it either. It's so uh, I'll be a judge. You can become a uh, pioneer of uh, media and somehow we'll probably end up bribing each other in some way. Uh, That's how it normally works. Yeah. I think that that is completely fair. So you have a, a new single coming out. You actually have three singles coming out or is it an EP? Would you call it like a combined EP or is it just um, three individual Fighters in Missing Man formation. Yeah, I guess. So I probably like, you know, as a former DC punk, I got to call it like a seven inch. Okay. Um, yeah. Which in my mind, a seven inch is not an EP. An EP is like four or five songs. Yep. Whereas a seven inch is like two to three. Are you listening, ladies? Hmm. I, um, <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> um, all right, so so basically like a single with a couple of B sides, right? That's what we're we're going with. Okay, yeah. Which would be the single? What, what of those? Um, you have to choose a single. single so now. I think that's also interesting because I <laughs> uh, like Hidden Hand and I Am. They like bleed into each other. They're almost kind of the same song. Interesting. Um, 
So I, I couldn't choose and I called it the hidden hand slash I am single. Mm. Um, but there is also one more song on there. I got you. Okay. So, so I couldn't call it the hidden hand slash I am slash heaven single because that seemed excessive. Right. And one of them isn't yours. Right. <laughs> <So it> seems, <laughs> seems maybe you can't just merge it in with your tunes and be like, this one is also mine now. I could call Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, I follow him on Instagram. Yeah. We talk. No, you're good friends <laughs> at this point. You could probably come by his house and just be like, hey, is there if I steal your music? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we have I Am today. Mm -hmm. um, we have like a, a little sample of it here. If you want to hear the whole song, just go to the one hour mark of the show and you can listen to it in its entirety. Uh, tell us a little bit about this tune. What what inspired you to, to write I Am and, and then make it bleed into Hidden Hand? Sure. Um, I Am. This song is weird. Um Mostly because we like weird, so that's good. Yeah, weird is probably good. Um, original, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Art that's weird, I think, is good art. Doesn't mean that art that isn't weird isn't also good art, but it. I, I think that it could also be a good no. You know, it could be a good no. Yeah, <laughs> it, it might not be no. your thing, but it yeah. tends to be good art. Or like I see what's going on here, but no. What drew you to this song? Like what? What made it feel like it needed to uh, right? So. To fruition? Um, so I've had like a few solo projects now. I actually started off like in electronic music. Okay. Um, so I started doing that in college. You know, we all have a laptop and we're alone in our dorm rooms and. Uh, and we all make music. We yeah. make music. That's what we do. Yeah. Just for the record. Um, so at the time, like <laughs> chill wave and like bedroom pop was like starting to be a thing. Okay. Um. So I think the first time like I ever wrote those uh, lyrics like in some version of them, um, I do tend to uh, recycle lyrics. Is that kind of Owl City like? Is that what you'd call that like bedroom pop kind of piece? Or is um, it less, even more laid back than that? It's more laid back than okay. that. Yeah, because that's like pop in my mind. Okay. Yeah. Um. So that, but then I think of lower like key even. Yeah, I think of like um. I feel like bedroom pop is like dominated by women. So like, like a solo singer with like a, um, like a Fender plugged into a practice amp. Gotcha. That's okay, what yeah, I, yeah. like in my mind, that's what bedroom pop is. Nice. Um, okay. Low five. But yeah. So I was doing feeling. electronic music and I feel like those lyrics probably came out in that way. And I only know this cause I played this song the other day and, um, one of the very few friends who is, like seeing this weird progression of electronic to punk to Christian rock <laughs> um, over the span of like 10 years. Um, he saw this song and he was like, I think I've heard that one before, but what? you changed it. And I was like, Oh, oh no, he's catching on. He I got to stop inviting Martin to things. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to tell people Martin stop spilling the beans for yeah. God's sakes. Um, yeah, so I think what the song eventually became, sorry, that was like a very long way no, of me fine. like getting I, there. We're, um, we're finding out a little bit about you. Yeah, so this song, this song, so I am uh, is what you know God refers to him as, yeah, as mm -hmm. himself, um, specifically when he's talking to Moses and the burning bush and right. he's telling Moses to go back to the people, which I believe is in the Sorcerer's Stone, which is like the fourth and Beowulf book. actually, is it, oh, Beowulf, is it? Okay. yeah. Um, you were right the first time. That's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's right there with like the birds and stuff. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I remember that part mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, there's a white. The whale, burning bush is right, telling right. Moses go back to the people, and Moses is like, "Dude, I can't just like go tell people <laughs> that a bush on fire told me like they needed to change. No one's going <laughs> right. to listen to me." And he's like, "No, they are. Right. Tell them I am." is here to change them. Mm -hmm. And Moses, I don't think he, like, in my mind, Moses is like, oh, sure, okay, right, yeah. yeah, like, I'm not, I'm not going to go against you or anything, but, like, you're, it's a rock and a hard I'll tell place. Him. Right? I'll Be tell him, I guess. Because there's a talking, firing <laughs> fire bush that's saying, go do this. Yeah, like, you really and wouldn't question a bush on fire right, talking <laughs> speaking to you. Speaking to you. <laughs> in this God voice, and so you're like, I mean, I should probably do it, but this is not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, that song is kind of like, well, what if I imagined like God was trying to talk to me and yeah. trying to tell me to go do a thing? And I was like, 
that's insane. Like no one, no one's gonna, no one's gonna catch on to that. And God's like, no man, like tell him I am is telling you to do that. Would the song be self-referential at that point? What do you mean? Like the fact that like something inspired you to write a song to tell people about this. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're trying to get people to listen to that song. Oh, I see what you're doing. Right. And yeah. so it yeah, kind I, of refers to itself in his way as its own signal. Yeah. Right. I think so. I think what's nice about like uh, when I write music is I'm not even really sure I know what it's about. Yeah. And then people are like, oh, this is what I got from that. Oh. And you're like, well, I wasn't like being vague <laughs> on purpose, yeah. but like, cool. It, it, I felt like I was being <laughs> I'm glad that enough. helped you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a, a listen to this. Um, again, if you want to hear the whole track, one hour mark of the show, um, this is just a snippet that we have of Ethan Andrews' I Am. Because no one can see. <laughs> I'm kidding cuz so this is the thing I've always asked of of people who are writing songs about uh faith or religion and stuff and mm-hmm. that is just a little metaphor a little poetry and I think that that does that right it there's it, not a single Jesus line in anything that I write <laughs> you've, you've taken it and made that more personal right yeah. you've said this is something that's very important to me and this Hopefully. is how I how I digest that and how it flows through me rather than just kind of copying and pasting other things that you've heard. And so I really appreciate that. And uh, again, uh, the track itself is going to be available Monday, August 5th, along with hidden hand and heaven Uh, go up to facebook.com slash Ethan Andrew music and like the page. And again, post shows up there that you want to see him at. Pandering, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your music with us. Yeah, thank uh, you. Let's move on to something that you might need a little help from above on. Uh, we have a little game show we like to call uh, Please God, Just Get One Right. Oh, God. Our previous guest, uh, Brian from Taller Tales, uh, they're playing, um, let's see, they're playing Colorama in September, the 27th. Um, and they've got a release coming out on July 19th, which is Best Day, their album coming out on Rad Pop Records. Um, but yeah, if if you don't like this particular um, category, you could um, uh, you could actually go. Oh, they have a show. Sorry. October 18th, Metro Gallery in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. You could go up and you could just scream at them. Yeah. Like the <laughs> birds falling from the sky you just bleed from your eyes screaming i'll read directly from beowulf um 13 <laughs> 7 mm-hmm. um all right so are you ready for your uh category shoot i find this incredibly entertaining uh it is norse myth- mythology oh gosh <laughs> yeah. oh gosh uh so also kind of faith-based but are what no, okay <laughs> yeah norse <laughs> Norse mythology there's I guess at some point like somebody did believe in this but I feel like even then it was more of like a cultural thing I don't know yeah maybe I mean they had gods and everything and I assume that they did like different types of ceremonies and stuff I don't think it happens now I think that that's pretty safe to say that there's probably Uh, maybe very very there are people out there yeah well yeah I mean, it's that whole, uh, what is it, Rule 42 or whatever, where <laughs> just everything's on the internet. So, um, Ooh. yeah. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, Adam, what do you have for us? All right, we're going to keep these quick. Okay. Norse cosmology breaks our universe into various realms all surrounding the world tree Yggdrasil. Uh, you got Midgard, the realm of man, Asgard, the realm of the gods, Jotunheim, the realm of the giants. If you've seen a Marvel movie, you've heard all of those. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Including all of those examples, how many realms did the Norse believe in? I'm a DC fan, first of all. 
Um, yeah. So that's like already sad. Well, we're in um, DC, so it's good. Oh, you did a thing there. <laughs> <laughs> like that took me a second. I'm constantly doing things. Oh, man. You said how many realms are there? Yeah. Yes. Let's go with 100. 100 realms. A little high. Nine. Nine. That's, yeah, that's nine realms. Just a little high. That is just a little high. <laughs> All right. Oh. He's being nice. According to Norse mythology, which is so hard to say for me, what happened when Muspel, the um, fire region to the south, collided with Niflheim, the frozen world to the north? What what event occurred? Fire and ice. Yeah. Uh, Shaq could play basketball again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, it was li- uh, all life was created. That from was the fire beginning and of ice. Life. Yeah, mm. they came to, together and collided. And where's like heart from Captain Planet? <laughs> <That's a> good... <laughs> where's the monkey? Yeah, <laughs> that guy yeah. had the best power. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, I guess Change we didn't need minds. those. Uh, all right, Adam. According to Norse mythology, a, cre- a trio of gods found two pieces of driftwood and imbued them with life to create the first two humans, from which all humans descended. What were the names of these two beings? Okay, well, they were definitely both named Pio- uh, Pinocchio, right? <laughs> yeah, obviously. Isn't that a thing that, like, Pinocchio becomes Driftwood? Um, oh. I'm not familiar with that part of the storyline. Yeah, he, like, gets lost at sea. Right. And, yep. like, forgets everything, and he I, becomes Driftwood. I okay. think that's in the book. The book. <laughs> um, <laughs> in Beowulf, yeah, chapter 13, probably. verse 7. Pinocchio, okay. the book. Yeah, so they're both named Pinocchio. Uh, ask an Embla. <laughs> Embla. This is just hard. This is a very hard one. I'm, um, I'm sorry. I'm not trying hard. No, right. no, that's fine. No. <laughs> I think, I think I'm you're having lots right. of fun, We'd rather, you guys. Yeah, no, We'd I, rather you have fun than spend three <laughs> minutes humming and hawing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so that those were the first two humans, okay. right? What was the first living thing according to Norse myth- mythology? Uh, Norse rhymes with horse. That's a really good guess. That is, it is not correct, but I, I like the logic that you took. The rhyming? Yeah. <laughs> logic? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Why? Well, because you think like, well, what are we going to call ourselves? Well, we could call ourselves horses. No, 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 no. We have to change it a little to show respect to the actual god horse, right? <laughs> so Norse. Yeah. Okay. So we're Norse. No, it, uh, it was a primordial frost giant named Ymir. Okay. Yeah. So, the so they thought the winter was coming. That was the living thing yeah. that was first. Uh, all right, Adam, your last one. This Norse god sacrificed his hand to the wolf Fenrir so that the other gods could bind the great wolf. Considered a god of victory and fearless battle, he was adapted by the Romans as the god of war, Mars. What was this Norse god's name? Well, it's Ares, but yeah, is it a different name in Norse? Ares was Greek. Right, but he's adapted from Mars, right? God of War. So yeah. he, he's at least one of the proto gods that the that the Romans the Romans adapted stole as to this god as to a, make Mars. To make as a Mars. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let's go with Kratos, God of oh. War video games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he's looking for. Is Tyr. Tear or tire? Is it tear or tire? I wonder. I've always heard it pronounced as tear because it's tier? also the name of one of my favorite bands. Oh, okay, there you go. Nice. So this is the one I put one in here that I thought you had a shot at, that you had a genuine shot at. I'm we'll so see sad. Happens. I'm gonna disappoint you. <laughs> uh, where do uh, where do all mighty Norse warriors hope to go when they die? Oh man, Skyrim. What do they call it? Um, this is it for for uh, all of the points. Oh Gosh. All or nothing. All oh, my nerds. I was gonna be mad at you for really making seriously. such a gift yeah. question. But... <laughs> you were all the other ones. You were like, I was whatever. Like, wow, I might Mittler. actually know that one. And now you're like, oh um, god, damn it. No, damn. <laughs> oh gosh. Because it is this. It's the same thing in Skyrim, right? I don't know. I didn't. The... I haven't played Skyrim. Wow. But where Not video do game the, fans? Where do all mighty Norse warriors hope to go when they die? It's High Rothgard or something like that. High Rothgard. No, no, it is not. Damn it. So it's not the one. It's Valhalla. Oh. Yeah. I guess I did know that somewhere in the back of my head. Yeah. It's, <laughs> just, it's a common term people have uh, thrown about. But unfortunately, you, you didn't get one right. That's okay. It's a very difficult game that two stupid idiots came up with. Um, <laughs> what we need from you now is a category that you can 
take your uh, pain and frustration and, and ball it up into a new category for your next guest. What would you like them to try and answer six trivia questions about? So I like that we talked about birds. Um, I just had a friend go on a uh, like bird call date. Okay. Um, so that was super funny. And now she can like actually do bird calls. No, she can oh. like determine what bird it is by the oh, call. So nice. let's go with that. Like just play bird noises and see if they can guess what kind of bird that is. We've never done a audio a double thing. jeopardy. Maybe well, then this how about you doing. guys make the noises? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with bird calls. Maybe we'll have trivia about them or maybe we'll have audio. Run with it. Do what you doubles. want. Valhalla. I'm yeah. mad about that one now. I, I think I got stuck on the Skyrim thing. Well, we're running <laughs> we're running uh, uh, way far behind on time. So um, we've got a, a few minutes left. Let's kind of jump through some of these uh, stories that you have from near and far. Um, ironically, they both end up being hell shows. One is a near hell show. <laughs> yeah. And one is a far hell show. Right. Uh, which one do you want to make sure we get to? Um, I think the local one is, okay. is like particularly funny at least like to me in the past tense i love it yeah so let's do the local one and if we get to the other one that's great sure sure i'll try to keep it short i guess Um, whatever so um as a preemptive thing i i play great shows all the time like where nothing goes wrong and i did bring two uh stories where like a lot of shit goes wrong. So we're presuming so, that in general, usually you're very talented is, and and you get through a smooth show and everyone's like, that's really Maybe amazing. less on the talent and more just like good management. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So this, uh, yeah. So this happened um, in Herndon, my hometown. Um, there was an art space there. Mm-hmm. They had hosted like a few shows, um, but there was really no... Um, like network connection with them like so how to like book it and things like that right and yeah um that's consistent schedule and yeah like you know yeah. despite the internet and its prowess um i Probably still had to fad. like yeah i still had to like go in in person and be like hi i'm interested in hosting a show here and this is like before i had a shaved head or tattoos or, or <laughs> jorts so the guy was like great idea yeah um that'll be like two hundred dollars and you know the space right so god calls us to be generous um but in this case i was very foolish and gave him two hundred dollars um we set up the show there were five bands um the bands wanted to share drum sets did each band pay two hundred dollars no i put up all the money yeah i put up all the money and we were going to make people pay five dollars at the door sure but i think in in my mind uh you know i was young i was like i don't need this cash i mostly just need this show to go well because then hopefully he won't make me pay two hundred dollars every time to set up a show maybe this will be a thing where like we become friends through this show no like total opposite actually ends up happening he'll see that like i'm consistent with stuff and be like we love having you don't worry about the 200 bucks yeah so um i'm like not even concerned with like even taking people's money at the door i ask for donations people don't yeah um that's also a very typical thing that happens with punk diy um so the drummer like forgets his drum set. We start two hours behind. Um, we're now like, <laughs> oh wow! Eventually pushing into like the ten o'clock hour, and the guy's like, okay, like you guys need to wrap up in thirty minutes. And oh I'm no! Like, I'm like, hey man, I still got like two more bands that are here and like want to play. How about I give you like another hundred dollars? And we call it even. And he was like, great, great idea. Wow. Literally the last band gets on stage. They strum a single chord and the guy's like, nope, too loud. I'm shutting it down. You guys all need to get out of here or I'm calling the cops. Oh my God. So I'm like, all right, let's just grab all our stuff. Like I'll come back in later and talk to him. Let's just all get out of here. Yeah. Um, so the story ends with like, Everyone eventually getting out, except for the stupid drummer that showed up late. He showed up late because he was super drunk. Yeah. He's screaming at the owner. Oh, um, God. So then, yeah, we never booked a show at Herndon Art Space ever again. Well, I know you have <laughs> another hell show to share with us. 
We'll have to get you back on the show next time you're releasing some music. Yeah. Did you have a good time? I think so. Excellent. Again, Ethan <laughs> Andrew, he is releasing uh, three songs Monday, August 5th. Go check them out. Go to Ethan Andrew Music uh, up on Facebook. Look at him at all the digital music areas. Please like our post, follow us, or tweet us, share the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We cannot do this without you. Don't forget to review us on Facebook, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. If you're an artist, music, musician, or culture creator in the D.C. area, we want you on our show. Email us at booking at anotherwaystedhour.com. Thanks to Engineer Adam, Kevin Eminger, McNally22, Justin Rogers from Metal Records, from Metal Studios, and Alchemical Records for all their contributions. Thanks most of all to Ethan Allen and you, our fans, for wasting a perfectly good hour with us. This has been Another Wasted Hour, and if you just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you.